hope that today is the launching point for a new national discussion around prosperity, around poverty, around how we move forward together. The Calgary Poverty Reduction Strategy is called Enough for All. And there's two meanings to that. The first meaning, of course, is that in a prosperous place, in a wealthy place like Calgary, like Canada, there ought to be enough resources for everyone to be able to live a great life. The other meaning, of course, the tougher meaning for folks uh, in the room today, is that perhaps we are spending enough on programs which are linked to, to Paul Bourne's line, not making it easier to live in poverty, but having less poor people. So how do we use the resources we have in order to achieve that goal? You know, I live in a very wealthy place. We all live in a very wealthy place by world standards. Calgary, of course, is the economic engine of Canada. Even in this downturn, there's lots of activity. Deals are being made. Dinners are being had. People are working hard, and many are getting rewarded very handsomely for it. But even in such a wealthy place, many are being left behind. And this is the truth that those of us who work hard on issues of poverty have to face, and it's a tough truth. And that is that every single one of you in this room, every single one of you who works for a civic government, including my colleagues at the City of Calgary, every single one of you who works with an agency working with people in poverty can tell me about the great work you do. Every single one of you can tell me stories about the people you've helped, about the families you've lifted out of poverty, about the folks who've moved on, about the kids who went on to school and stopped the cycle of multi-generational poverty. Every single one of you can tell me that. So why is it, why is it that the rates of poverty in our community have not changed in more than a generation? Why is it that child poverty remains stubbornly high despite politicians of every stripe vowing to eliminate it for my entire life? That's a hard question. And it's a question that we have to be able to address. It means we're not doing it right. We were also raised with an ethic of service that no matter what you have, there's someone who has less. They always have the moral obligation and the duty to be able to do service to help community in whatever way you can. But we didn't do it alone. I grew up in Marlborough in East Calgary in a working class neighborhood, and we didn't have a lot of money. But what I had was extraordinary opportunity. I graduated from an outstanding public school. I spent my Saturday afternoons at the public library I learned to swim very badly in a public swimming pool. Every time I use that line, I am reminded that I now run the public swimming pools and I better stop badmouthing them. I explored the city that I love on public transit. I had the great good fortune of living in a community that cared about my success. Because there is, in fact, one thing that makes Canada successful one thing that makes my city successful. And that is not, in fact, the fact that there are carbon atoms in the ground somewhere nearby. National audiences are always very shocked when I tell them that the oil sands are not, in fact, located underneath downtown Calgary. <laughs> the Calgary Tower is not actually an oil derrick. They are pretty far away. But the core of our success as a nation is that we have discovered a very simple truth. A simple truth that, I'm sorry to say, escapes too many in this broken world of ours. And that simple truth is just this. We're all in it together. Our neighbor's strength is our strength. Our neighbor's pain is our pain. The success of any one of us is the success of every one of us. And as a community, we have to continue to understand that that simple truth is the core of our success. If I'm being academic about it, I say that we figured out in Canada, as particularly in Western Canada, that we need to be generous in sharing opportunity, that we need to invest in social mobility. But what that really means is that we need to look after one another. When I first started working out of university, I moved to Toronto, I was working for a management consulting firm. 
I had a roommate, she was working at the same firm, we were at the same level, and after one year of being at that firm, we both got a raise. And I remember standing with her, waiting to go to a concert on the Danforth, at a pizza pizza, eating a slice of pizza before the concert, and you know you're not supposed to talk about your money and your raises, right? And I looked at her and I said, so, did you get good news today? And she said, yeah. And I said, you know something, I was just thinking about something. I'm 22 years old, and with the raise that I just got, I now make more money than my dad ever made in his life. So our goal in the Enough for All strategy is to reduce poverty by 50% in our city by 2023. It means building relationships, networks, and connections. It means not judging people who are living in poverty. It does not mean requiring people living in poverty to validate their circumstances. It means helping people. Because as I said, our truth that we've discovered is that our neighbor's success is our success, but of course, our neighbor's failure is our failure. And we have to make sure that we are not together failing. <coughs> so of course, I have some homework for you. I am a professor after all. I want you to share what you're learning, and I want you to share it way beyond this wall, these walls. I mean, you've just listened to me. Hopefully, you've heard something interesting. This is not an interesting conversation. This is a conversation about people who have been having this conversation for years. So we actually need to push this conversation much further into our community, into the minds of our decision makers, our business leaders, and others. And we can start creating these partnerships together. But I have homework too. And my homework is to use today as the starting point for a deep and meaningful conversation across this country amongst mayors, among people who work in the community, among government leaders at other orders of government, and to take leadership. And mayors have to take leadership because no one else will. The most frustrating part of this whole thing, and this is not in my notes, but I'm saying it anyway, the most frustrating part about this whole thing is we know what the answers are. We know what the answers are. And a lot of the answers have to do with very significant and brave changes to federal government policy. How many years ago was the experiment in Dauphin, Manitoba? Older than me. And we know what, it works. And yet we still have a party yesterday coming out in favor of the middle class, talking about increased child tax benefits and so on, which all makes sense but not taking that brave step about talking. And by the way, their guaranteed child benefit is a negative income tax. It is. So why don't we expand that? Why don't we talk more about guaranteed annual income and negative income tax and talk about the policy changes that need to happen? But again, someone has to lead that conversation and I pledge to you that my fellow mayors and I will take leadership in this conversation because we have to and we will. I have many more stories but there's a panel coming but I want to leave you with this. When you think about my story from eating pizza on that street corner to dad sitting in that city hall. The thing that is extraordinary about my story is that it is not in any way extraordinary. It is an ordinary story. An ordinary story about an ordinary family, but an ordinary family that was supported extraordinarily by its community. And really, that is the promise of our country. The promise of our nation is just this, that every single person in every single corner of this nation, regardless of their circumstance, regardless of where they come from, regardless of what they look like, regardless of how they worship, regardless of whom they love, that every single person in every single corner of this country deserves the chance to live right here, right now, a great Canadian life. 
That is the promise of our community. That's what you fight for every single day. That's what I fight for every single day. And I want to say thank you for the work you do. Thank you for fighting for that promise every single day. We got a lot more work to do. Thank you all.